Okay, so we were done with the first two parts. Of course, you can do a lot more with the Query Builder. This is just an introduction to the Query Builder. You can do joins, you can do uh, multiple parameters, you can do calculated fields, all these. Whatever you can do in SQL, you can do in a Query Builder. Now, we want to use this query that we've created into my form, my application. So let's go back to the customer form. Here's my customer form. Last time, I explained to you about these things in my application here. Now we have two methods that were inserted for us. All right, so we have two methods here. One method is called save item dot click underscore click, and one of them is customer form dot load. And I said this is the method that get called when you start your form when the form is loaded into memory. Now, the first thing we do here is that. We say this dot table customer table adapter dot fill. Have you seen this before? Let's look at the table. Let's look at the table adapter for the customer. Here is the table adapter for the customer. Do we have anything called fill here? This is the first method. This is the first query in my for my table adapter. So I have a query called fill or method name called fill. If you look at the configuration of this, it just say select everything from that table with nowhere clause. So that's why when you were running, when you run the form first time, you get all the records. So if I say form customers, I get all the records because there are no restrictions, nowhere clause, because I'm using the fill method. If we change, if we go back to my form, and I'll change that instead of fill and I have two more things right fill if you remember I have one called fill by Ali right what do you expect to happen now yeah, only because the query says give me only the record that contains the name Ali so I only have one record so if I run it I'll get only one record and only Ali all right so the names and the method that we give when we create the uh, the query those method those names we use to run them in my program in my form is that clear yeah all right let's go back to this query so i'm gonna leave it back the way it was fell by or just leave it there so we can see it so i'm gonna comment it out and basically copy it again and then paste it so you'll have different versions of it. So here is the way it was. But what if I want to call the last query that actually receives a value, a parameter? By name, right? So what I call, I'll take this and I'll show you how you get the list of the queries. So I'll take this, control copy, and then I say control V now if I click on the dot and I type in fill I have all the three methods in my table adapter the fill fill by Ali and fill by name now if I select the fill by name of course I have to give it values the first value is the same thing that you have in here which is what what I would the, uh, the, uh, the the table name so I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take this table name, control copy, and then paste it in the same place. Then what? Comma. What does it expect next? String name. So it's expecting a string value here. So if I say string, because it's a string, and I type in percent sign B or uh, C, okay? And percent sign and close the string now what will happen here it says first thing happens is what let's comment this one out because I don't want it to run the query twice 
Now, when I run my query, it's looking for all the names that has the letter C in them. So if I run it, and customer, no record, because I could not find a name that has a letter C in it. All right? But if we go and change it to put the letter A, for example, then you click on run, then you click on customers, then you got two records instead of no records. All right? Okay, well, that's good, but we're still in the same boat. We still have the same problem, okay? It's still hard-coded. The value is still hard-coded, and then we don't ask, the, the user does not have the option to enter the values. So we want to give the user a way that they can enter the search criteria they're looking for, some any letter in the name, and then based on that, they will get the value. So how do we do that? We go back to the code, and uh, let's comment the last one, and then uncomment the, the first one, okay? And let's go back to the design, and add two things. We want to add a search criteria. We want to put a button that say find. You type in the name and then you say find and it will give you the name based on that. All right, so now we gave this a name, we have a button. What we want to do, when I click on find, we will take this value, whatever the user enter here, pass it to the query and based on the result, it will be shown here. So we double click on the find. And do you think, can we use this, the one we have before? Which query do we use? Do we use the fill by name or fill by Ali? Yeah, fill by name. So here you say fill by name. But instead of having this Ali, what do we do in here? We will put no, not question mark. The value from the text box, txt search dot text. Right? So this, whatever the user enter here now, will be the value that we use for the query. But remember, we're using like here. So if I run it again, so I just simply copied the the one that we had before in here, and then I just put it in my button. Okay, that's all I did. Type, all right, so now if I run it, click on customers. Now, how many records do I have here? Six. If I type in B, question, uh, and percent, and then put the and percent, why I'm using the and percent here? Then I get one record. You got the idea? If I say F and percent and then click on that, I got one record here. Why are we using the F here, uh, the percent sign here? Why are we using the percent sign? Because we're using like. But this is a problem. The user doesn't know if I am a user, I don't know where to put percent sign or not percent sign. I just want to type in A and you just give me everything that has A in it. So can we change our program to be smart enough that says if you put A in it, it will put those percent signs for us? Yes, of course. What you do in here, instead of just having that, we add the percent sign ourselves. So how do we do this? We do it in two ways. You can do it, define a string and then concatenate it together, or you can do it in here, just a simple concatenation. Meaning what? Let me just hit the enter key so you can see it on the next line. So what do you do? You just put the percent sign before, and then you concatenate it to the value from the string, plus the percent sign, and concatenate it at the end of the string. So whatever value you type in in the string will have these things in them now. So now if I run it, 
if I do customer search, now if I just type in A, fine, I got two record. If I get B, fine, I got one record. F, fine, one record. Yeah? So I don't have to do what? I don't have to type in these percent signs in my form. All right? So let's stop in here.